part of determining uh, the structure of an organic molecule once we know the molecular formula is using what's known as mass spectrometry. This is where a high energy uh, electron beam is used to knock out an electron from uh, an, or an organic molecule. This makes a gas phase cation. Um, which is then detected by the instrument. Okay, you'll recall that we looked at mass spectrometry and how it works a long time ago in topic, um, in both topics one and two, uh, looking at isotopic uh, patterns. Okay, so um, it's also important to note that a mass spectrometer um, will only detect cations. Uh, so it also won't pick up any uh, neutral neutral radicals or anything like that. So I'm going to illustrate how this works by examining propane. So the equation for what would happen in a mass spectrometer for the propane molecule, so that's C3H8, gets hit with a high energy electron, releases C3H8 one plus and two free electrons. Now remember, the mass of an electron is essentially zero. Uh, so when an electron is removed from C3H8, its mass, the mass of the, the molecule itself doesn't change when it becomes an ion. Right, so this is why it's, um, it's important to note that the mass spectrometer detects uh, positively charged cations. All right, so here's a sample, very simple mass spectrum. All right, the x-axis uh, is m over z, so this is the mass to charge ratio you'll remember from topic two. Um, now for our structure, uh, detection and determination purposes, we're going to assume that the only charge that's present is plus one. This helps us um, because we, do, we don't need to uh, recompute the ratio or anything like that. All right, so the y-axis here would be uh, relative or percent abundance. Be sure to check just in case there's any type of follow-up question that you may be asked about actual percent abundance. Um, you can see here this would actually be uh, relative abundance because that peak at 44 actually goes all the way up to 100 and then the peak at 45 you can see uh, is about 3 so I would actually have to recompute if I needed to determine the percentage you can go back and have a look at the work from topic 2 if you need some elaboration on that alright so the, uh, the the signal that occurs at the uh, at the highest mass to charge ratio is what's known as the molecular ion now sometimes you'll see um, a signal one unit higher than the molecular ion. All right, and this would come as a very, very small signal as the one shown here on the screen. This is due to uh, the machine picking up uh, a single atom of carbon-13 somewhere in a molecule. All right, so remember carbon-13 uh, has a natural abundance of about 1%, so this is quite common. But typically the highest um, highest signal that we see is the molecular ion and that's the species where we have the organic compound with a single electron removed. Okay, so you can see that if I add up the masses for C3H8 I get a, a mass of 44 which is what was shown there. Okay, so now to have a little bit closer of a look at actually what happens inside a mass spectrometer and what can result, we'll look at a complete mass spectrum here. Alright, so I'm going to find my molecular ion at mass to charge ratio 44, shown there at the at the end. All right, and now I'm going to have a look at what are some of these other signals. So the peak I have circled here it comes in at 29. Okay, so if I subtract 29 from 44, I find out that's 15. Well, that means that from the signal at 44 to the signal at 29, we've lost 15 mass units. This is a common indication that a methyl fragment has been lost because a carbon has a mass of 12, each hydrogen has a mass of 1 for a total of 15. So that signal itself indicates that a methyl group, CH3, has somehow been lost. This would leave behind the signal that registers C2H5 1 plus. So that's actually what the signal at 29 corresponds to. Um, this entire mass spectrum is displaying what's known as a fragmentation pattern. Uh, a fragmentation pattern is essentially how the molecule breaks apart. And as it breaks apart, it leaves behind clues uh, as to what the overall structure of the molecule was. Uh, propane is quite straightforward because it's just a three carbon chain. But as a molecule becomes a little bit more complicated, uh, it may lose characteristic functional groups, it may lose water molecules, that sort of thing. 
All right, so you can I just highlighted there that M over Z signal at 15. That's actually the methyl radical. So uh, that's also another common uh, loss pattern. All right, and the final aspect, what we should look at here would be um, common molecular iron ion patterns. Sorry, these are indicative of isotopes present in the uh, in the mix. So. <laughs> If I have a very simple mass spectrum here and I have a look at the molecular ion, so it, to me it looks like the molecular ion is at 66, but there's also a significant peak at 64, which appears to be about uh, three times larger than the peak at 66. All right, this pattern, this three to one uh, molecular ion distribution, is indicative of the chlorine atom. I guess of the element chlorine present somehow in the compound. Um, now, formulas are usually are often determined uh, for you before you have to examine a mass spectrum. We would get this type of information from an elemental analysis and often provide it to you. Um, so this pattern, though, this uh, three to one sizing, uh, is indicative of the natural abundance of chlorine. Right, chlorine. Seventy-five percent of all the chlorine in the universe has a mass of thirty-five, while twenty-five percent has a mass of thirty-seven. So, when you see this um, molecular ion pattern, where there's a uh, one peak that is about three times the size of the of the next, that's two mass units higher. Uh, this is a positive indication for chlorine present in the sample. All right. So, if we know that the formula of this is C2H5Cl, right? We can add up the mass of C2H5Cl, and we're going to come away with 64.5. Now you'll notice on the mass spectrum here, 64.5 doesn't exist. Remember, the mass of uh, C2H5Cl, so chloroethane, as we would calculate from the periodic table, would come out to 64.5, but that's taking into account that the relative atomic mass of chlorine is actually, remember, the weighted average of both chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. The machine itself, so the mass spectrometer, actually picks up individual ions. So you see that mass at 64, that's a, an ion that has two carbons, five hydrogens, and one chlorine whose mass is 35. The peak at 66 is two carbons, five hydrogens, and a chlorine whose mass is 37. So this is quite common when we are looking for things like chlorine. Bromine has a, a very easily identifiable splitting pattern as well like this. Um, the bromine isotopes are essentially equal, so we see essentially two molecular ion peaks uh, separated by one unit.